A hurricane is forming in the Caribbean Sea, and this is expected to become as strong as a Category 2 hurricane as it approaches Cuba over the next 48 hours, where there will be major impacts. And then after it passes Cuba, it will re-enter into the Gulf of Mexico, and we are expecting at least tropical storm impacts in parts of the United States as we go into the weekend. So in today's forecast, we're going to break down exactly what you need to know about Tropical Storm Raphael and why this could become a hurricane over the next 24 hours and why it's going to be a big problem here. Well, let's begin with what's happening in the Caribbean Sea right now, and this right here is Tropical Storm Raphael. It is moving to the north and northwest, and it is actually approaching Jamaica this morning, which where there will be some impacts there, but overall, this is still a middle ground tropical storm, so nothing really major is expected there today aside from rainfall and some gusty winds, but as this moves to the northwest, it's going to be entering a pretty favorable environment with high oceanic heat content and very low wind shear, so that's going to lead to the potential for some pretty rapid intensification during the evening hours tonight and into tomorrow morning, where we are expecting a Category 1 or even 2 hurricane to impact areas in Cuba as we go into tomorrow morning. Now, from there, current forecast is that this will start to track into the Gulf of Mexico and is expected to become a problem for some part of the Gulf Coast, and we'll be talking more about that here in just a moment. Now, I do want to mention that yesterday we were live for eight hours covering a tornado outbreak that spanned across several states. This is what it looks like this morning. We had a large area of thunderstorms yesterday several large tornadoes that happened. Overall, things are clearing out, though. Today's severe weather risk is very low to zero, so there's good news there. We're not expecting any return of any major severe weather today or even tomorrow. Here's a closer view of Tropical Storm Raphael as it makes its approach to Jamaica this morning. A lot of the inner bands that we are seeing with lots of more deep convection are approaching the south side of Jamaica with a lot of heavy rain, gusty winds, and also the potential for some storm surge. But overall, it's not super organized yet, but it has become a bit more organized over the last 12 hours, and we do think this will be making a run at a hurricane as we go later into the afternoon and eventually into tonight. Now you might be wondering, where is Tropical Storm Raphael going to be going over the next few days? Well, let's check out several different computer models all embedded into one graphic, which is something we call the spaghetti models. Over the next 24 hours, this will continue to track to the northwest, eventually approaching Cuba as we go into Wednesday morning, and this is expected to become, again, a Category 1 or 2 hurricane upon landfall in Cuba as we go into Wednesday. Eventually, as we go into Thursday, this is expected to maintain hurricane intensity as it moves into the southeastern Gulf of Mexico. So this is actually still going to be a hurricane even into the Gulf, which, by the way, that is very rare for this time of the year. We do not usually see hurricanes in the month of November even close to the Gulf of Mexico. In this case, we actually have a bit of a rare situation here where we have a hurricane entering the Gulf of Mexico in early November. So definitely a surprise there. Here's the good news, though, to this entire story. As this continues to move to the northwest, the water temperatures are much cooler back over in the central and northern Gulf of Mexico. That doesn't mean we will not see impacts in the United States, but that does mean this tropical cyclone will be on a weakening trend as it moves towards the Gulf Coast of the United States. So you'll notice the spread of the computer models is still relatively large, with the majority of them bringing this towards either the Louisiana coastline or even back over closer to the Florida panhandle. So that's the current thinking right now, is that we are going to see some sort of landfall here between Louisiana and as well as the Florida panhandle handle. There is still a low chance that we could see the shift a little bit more to the east over the next 24 hours, but I think that's a pretty low chance. There were a couple of different models that brought this a little bit closer to Tampa, but again, I don't think that's going to happen. I think for the most part, we're going to see some sort of landfall here between the Florida panhandle and also back through parts of Louisiana. Now, in terms of the intensity of this hurricane or eventual hurricane, most computer models are currently indicating that this will become at least a category one hurricane sometime tonight or early tomorrow morning. So that's what we're thinking for now. Eventually, as we go into Wednesday, we do think that this will get very close. If not, it will make Category 2 status as we get closer to landfall in Cuba. And then after Cuba landfall, this will start to gradually weaken as it moves into the Gulf of Mexico. The current thinking is upon landfall in the United States, this will likely be some sort of middle grade tropical storm. So probably around 50 to 65 mile per hour winds that are maximum sustained near the uh, landfall area. And then perhaps wind gusts as high as 75 miles per hour. The other thing that this could bring as well is the potential for some localized flooding, potentially even a few tornadoes, and it also could bring the potential for some storm surge. Let's time this out over the next few days, beginning with where it's at right now, which again is just to the south of Jamaica. Over the morning hours, we'll continue to see some heavy rainfall and again some winds in Jamaica with the potential maybe even for a brief tornado somewhere. As we go later into this afternoon into the evening hours, this will eventually intensify into a hurricane, which again, it is expected to become at least a Category 1 hurricane, perhaps even a Category 
Category 2 hurricane by Wednesday morning, and this will eventually make landfall in, in western Cuba sometime around lunchtime on Wednesday. Notice how it's not going to weaken that much as it passes over land. Only a small increase in terms of pressure. But another thing I want to point out here is look at the Florida Keys in southwest Florida as we go into Wednesday evening. There will actually be some outer bands over there that will bring the potential for an isolated tornado or two. So if you're in the Florida Keys or southwest Florida, you might not think you're going to get any impacts out of this, but we actually could see a tornado or two. So definitely keep that in mind, especially south of Cape Coral as we go into Wednesday evening. Eventually, as we go into Thursday, this will be staying, I think, far enough west of Florida for the most of the concerns to really be minimal. We might have some very minor storm surge in the Florida Keys. That would be about it. Notice how it's still a hurricane even Thursday morning. Eventually, as we go into Thursday afternoon and evening, it will still be a hurricane, I think, all the way until Friday morning, where it gets to the central and northern part of the Gulf of Mexico. Notice how this becomes a much broader area of low pressure. There is still a center here. It will probably still be a tropical storm even into Friday night, but eventually by the time it makes landfall somewhere along the Gulf Coast, this will likely be some sort of middle grade tropical storm with maximum sustained winds again, anywhere from 50 to 65 miles per hour. Now, obviously it might not look very concerning, but any type of hurricane that we see could still bring storm surge. And even if it's not a hurricane along the coast of the United States, storm surge will definitely still be a problem along the immediate coastline. Winds could be a problem. We could see some isolated power outages, maybe some localized flooding. We also could see the potential for maybe a tornado or two as we go into the landfall time frame. You'll notice right now that the HAFSA model does indicate that there actually could be maybe a little round of maybe a few tornadoes as we go into Saturday here, wherever this makes landfall, which this model shows Alabama, Georgia, and Florida seeing that threat. But again, this could make landfall further west or maybe even slightly further east. And again, I don't want you to put all your eggs into one basket when it comes to where this will make landfall in the United States, because even the GEFS ensemble members still have a pretty wide spread. Notice how close a few of these ensembles bring this to Western Florida. So this might be something to watch for on the West coast of Florida as we go into Wednesday and early Thursday. Again, I don't think there'll be any major impacts there. I, again, I don't think this is going to be a major thing for the United States. I do think it'll be a major thing for Cuba, but overall, I think the United States is going to get fortunate here since the water temperatures are cooler. With that said, this could still make maybe a slight jog here to the east, maybe closer to Florida as we go into Thursday, but landfall along the northern part of the Gulf Coast will probably be somewhere between, again, the Florida Panhandle and then back over towards eastern Louisiana. I do want to reiterate that this is a pretty rare situation. Having a hurricane making landfall in the United States has only happened four times in the month of November in history. It, again, we're not expecting a hurricane upon landfall in the United States in November. With that said, the last hurricane to make landfall in the United States in November was actually Nicole in 2022. In addition to that, we've only ever seen 125 tropical storms or hurricanes in general in the month of November. So this is definitely a rare situation here for the United States. We are probably going to see a tropical storm make landfall here in the United States in only a few days. And again, November is not usually a month that we usually see that happening. And I also want to add on to that fact that we've only had about a dozen tropical storms or hurricanes even make landfall in the United States in the month of November. So again, it's a rare thing. It's never, it's not like it's never happened before, but it's definitely rare. It's not something that we see every single year. Now, if this does make landfall in the United States as a tropical storm or even a hurricane, which I don't think it will be, but if it makes landfall as a tropical storm, then it will end up being one of the only 13 or 14 tropical storms that have ever made landfall in the United States. So just a little interesting fact there. Now, here's the latest National Hurricane Center track. So as again, as I mentioned before, hurricane warnings in effect for parts of Cuba and as well as uh, some of the islands just south of Cuba as well. Again, we are expecting hurricane impacts into tonight and into tomorrow. There are tropical storm watches in effect for the Florida Keys. The National Hurricane Center does think that this will be making more of a westerly path uh, compared to a lot of the computer models. They think this will actually be going more towards Louisiana and Texas. Now, if this does make landfall in Texas or even Louisiana, we've actually never had a tropical system make landfall in either of those states in November. So that would also be the first time that we've ever seen that. So that's another rare little fact here. If it makes landfall in Florida, though, we've seen that several times here in the month of November, but again, it's still pretty rare. Uh, as of right now, forecasted to stay as a hurricane until Friday evening, eventually weakening into a strong tropical storm on Saturday as it continues to meander in the Gulf of Mexico. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to hit the like button down below and subscribe if you've not already.